strap in for a great double feature. The Shaw Brothers put out two major classics, one in 1972 and one in 1984, about a legendary family of generals, the Yang family. Based partially on the real-life General Yang Ye and his descendants, the Yang family has become a byword for brilliant, loyal military leaders. Characters from Water Margin and Condor Heroes claim to be descended from the Yangs. They are the absolute royalty among patriotic Chinese warriors. And based on the novels and operas inspired by the Yang family, the Shaw Brothers produced a pair of the greatest action films they ever did. We'll talk about these in reverse chronological order of production, since the 84 movie tells the story of what precedes the 1972 film. This was around 70 years of shifting borders and endless conflicts between groups claiming to be the true successors of the once great Tang Dynasty, ultimately leading to the Song Dynasty absorbing the other ethnically Han states, but surrounded by none too friendly otherwise ethnic states the Jurgens, the Tanguts, and the Kitanes. Thus the patriotic northern Han general Yang Ye ended up working for the Song, who were famously disloyal to this great hero. Yang Ye was sent off to battle the Katanes, but was betrayed by his Song superiors who sent his army no support in the bloody Battle of Golden Sands. Most of his men, including him and his sons, were killed. Eight Diagram Pole Fighter follows two of the Yangs as they seek vengeance on the traitors who caused their family's defeat. Alexander Fushang, in what tragically would be his last filmed role before a fatal car crash, plays one of the only survivors of the battle, driven mad with PTSD. His elder brother, played by Gordon Liu, takes refuge as a monk in Wu Tai and trains himself in spear warfare with a pole, hence the title. The monks refer to their Katan enemies as wolves. Dialogue from this is really well used by the Rizza on the Wu Tang album Eight Diagram. I may not be very holy, because I'm a soldier. I know how to fight, but I train hard, and I am not afraid of wolves. The young fifth son soon discovers that his pole technique is particularly effective against a wooden wolf at the monastery, ripping its teeth out ruthlessly. Meanwhile, his sister, played by the phenomenal Kara Hui, goes on the hunt for the traitors who caused her father and brother's deaths. She is eventually captured by the Kitans. When fifth brother finds this out, he leads a group of monks in a bloody assault. The final fight is overwhelmingly violent, with teeth getting ripped out in mass slaughter. It is also really entertaining. Fushang's sudden death in a car crash altered this film tremendously. His sixth son was meant to be the film's hero, gradually finding a way to live with his PTSD. But the tragedy happening mid-production forced the studio to rewrite the latter half of the film, giving Kara Hui's character much of the action originally slated for Fu Shang. Today, a studio probably would have dumped the entire project out of respect, but this was the 80s and the show went on. I wish I didn't need to address all this, since it casts a pall over what's otherwise a really fun kung fu romp. Obviously, Gordon Liu is amazing in this. A reviewer I read once said that Liu's use of weapons is organic, the three-section staff he uses in 36 Chambers of Shaolin looks like just an extension of his body. The same can be said here, turning a simple pole into a weapon of mass destruction. Maybe the standout scene. Fifth brother, who has never earned the trust of his Wu Tai masters, faces off with one in the temple as he's about to escape. He not only defeats his superior monk, he actually draws the Bagua, the eight diagrams on the temple floor during combat, using his pole and some pillows and candles. It is genius. Fourteen Amazons tells the follow-up story. No warriors of the Yang family are spared in this version of the Battle of Golden Sands, portrayed here in bloody detail, where 18 Diagram Pole Fighter sets up the trauma that haunts Fu Shang, Gordon Liu, and Kara Hui throughout the film, and makes a great deal out of the personal betrayal of the Yangs by Song General Pan Mei. Pan Dai Jiangguan, Yang Fu Yin Zheng Yao Sun Guo Zhong Li Song Si, Dian Du Li Li Ban Ha Bing Hai Zhang Lin Chong. In Fourteen Amazons, the reaction to the men's deaths is resolute and stoic. The only male left in the Yang family is a preteen boy, played in unconvincing drag by beauty queen Lily Ho. Lu Yan is commanding as the matriarch, Shi Tai Chun, but commanding was pretty much her M.O. She followed this up a couple years later by playing the Empress Dowager C.C. and kept on trucking into the 2010s, appearing in Ang Lee's controversial Lust Caution, the Joy Luck Club, and the massive hit Crazy Rich Asians. The family's toughest warrior is Mu Kui Ying, played by professional butt kicker Ivy Ling Po. Mostly famous for her early musicals, Ling Po is fearsome in this and in Duel for Gold, another great and vicious action film. Along for the ride are Lo Lie as a villainous prince and Yue Hua as the Amazon's inside man. But even with Yue Hua, Lo Lie, and several other male Shaw Brothers regulars on hand, the movie stands out as a who's who of Shaw Brothers actresses in a truly epic war film. The story here is pretty straightforward. The family matriarch and 13 daughters, once they hear their husbands have been killed, march to the Katain camp and kick a lot of butt. What happens along the way makes this movie a real delight. 
The standout scene, and I apologize for the spoiler, is when the group is divided on either side of a huge ravine. They form two cheerleader-like human pyramids, and they fall towards each other to form a human bridge. I mean, it's laughable, but it is so awesome. So, if you want a rousing kung fu double feature with a dose of Song Dynasty history tossed in for good measure, you really can't go wrong here. Eight Diagram Pole Fighter and 14 Amazons. A Shaw Brothers kick buttathon.